Welcome to Spoken Reviews, home of the Spoken Reviews. Today, let's do a real-world range test on the Tesla Cybertruck all-wheel drive. Uh, we're going to go from Houston, Texas, back home to Fort Worth, Texas, all on attempting to do it on one charge. Uh, so, let's see how it goes. Right now, we're sitting at about 50%, so we were going to head off to a supercharger, get charged up, and then head all the way up north to Dallas. <music> All right, so the first destination is going to be the Waller, Texas Supercharger. Really popular supercharger right off of 290, right outside of Houston. Uh, this one's good because it's out of Bucky's, and they do have both version 4 and version 3 superchargers out there. Uh, plus, Bucky's is always fun to stop and go. Um, so here, we're slowly headed towards there. You can see 8 miles away in the car, or the truck, is preconditioning, right? So really good because uh, in this situation the battery was cold because it had been sitting so we're getting the battery warmed up so that when we physically get there we can juice and get optimal speeds right so that's what we're after uh, to get the best speeds and it's all about the temperature right so if you try to supercharge a cold battery it's not going to charge fast uh, so what tesla does with the science is they warm up the battery get it to the optimal temperature, and then you can actually take in at a higher charge rate. All right, so here we are. Um, and I will say that I made a big mistake twice. I didn't even realize it. This Bucky's has both version four and version three. I went all the way down to the end, which is where the version three ones are, and past the version four ones, right? So the version four ones, is a little bit more crowded, and I didn't want people next to my truck, so I pushed off. Um, charge speed, as you can see, 227. Again, I probably would have been pulling 327 and saved myself time. So lesson learned. And I didn't even realize it until I was walking back out. I was like, hold up. Those are the version four ones, right? Uh, they don't really show it on the app very clear. Uh, but the version four, they're easy to spot because they're like six foot tall chargers, right? So significantly bigger chargers. Um, yeah, so that's on me. Lesson learned. <laughs> Won't do that again uh, now that I know that Waller has the, the big ones. Um, about to head inside to Bucky's, but man, this the cyber truck. I mean, again, this is dirty, right? So this is the dirty version. Needed to be cleaned up, needed to be washed, and this thing is looking extremely sharp. So can't complain. Uh, coming out of Bucky's, I'm always just amazed at how many gas stations love Bucky's. Um, Bucky's traffic can be annoying if anyone knows that. Um, also, things are expensive. They've gotten really expensive, but Bucky's overall is really cool. And again, you guys can see the very far right, those are the version 4s, which I completely missed. And I went for the traditional version 3s. Yikes. So yeah, I definitely, you know, caused myself a wait. Um, but for, for us, we basically went from 50% when we arrive to 92%. Um, so not too bad, and it took about 30 minutes. But needless to say, if I would have gone to the version 4, it would have been faster. But also... That speed really happens from like zero to like 60% and then things slowly start tapering off. So maybe in this case, since I started at 50%, it wouldn't have made the biggest deal, but definitely I need to, you know, lesson learn. So here I'm kind of starting to map it out. As you can see, I'm looking at the charge right now. I'm at 81% and I'm like, all right, if I got down here with 80%, what's the bare minimum I need to make it back home? And this is when I kind of start getting a little bit more confident in the range of the vehicle and I'm estimating, all right, give me about 80% to get there. Uh, because again, on the way down at hundred uh, percent, it took me 80% to drive down. I said 20% left. So I figured 80% drive, 20% buffer. So I figured to myself, Hey, if I give myself to 90%, you know, I'll have 10% buffer, right? So yeah, we'll see how it goes. Um, but again, truck looks awesome at all angles. Again, I really like the uh, the non-foundation series. Uh, the more I see it, the more I like it. Um, even when I see it side by side next to a foundation series, I think they look really similar. And there's there's not like some, you know, amazing preference there. So I think really once you start wrapping these things, that's when you really start seeing uh, the big difference in the styling. But yeah, this thing looks good at all angles. Uh, even when it's dirty, it looks good. Um, and again, been rained on been on the highway, you know, been up and down, but it's looking good. All right. So here we go again, wrapping up the charge, uh, at 90%. And this is when I'm like, all right, could probably leave, but Hey, you know, let me just get that extra 2%. Uh, just because, you know, by the time I get on the highway or 
or account for weather, wind. Uh, it was a little warmer outside, so I figured, hey, you know, let me just get to 92%. Uh, that's where I eventually decide to depart is at 92 percent um anything past 95 you're really going to be crawling but i was still pulling like decent speeds like 67 kilowatts i was like hey you know i might as well stay here um so let's go ahead and unplug the car and again so smooth the way tesla does um i've used the non-teslas i've had you know two mach i've had other uh non-tesla vehicles as well as teslas nothing beats that um but at this point the truck is telling me hey 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 you're at risk, right? It's telling me, hey, you can make it, but you're going to have to keep the speed below, which this was kind of concerning to me because my thought process was if I had the same consumption that I did on the way down, if I'm at 92%, I'd use 80% to drive and I'd have 12% left. That was my assumption going into this, but the truck knew, right? <laughs> the truck knew. So uh, at this point, uh, you know, I know that I'm going to pass at least six Tesla superchargers. So leaving Waller, going to head up Highway 6 to College Station. I'm going to pass one in College Station. It's not the most convenient. It's only eight of them. You have to, it's like off the highway. Uh, I'll also pass Waco, which anyone in Texas knows the Waco superchargers on a Sunday are packed. Um, after Waco, there's Abbott, Texas. Uh, after Abbott, it's Alvarado. After Alvarado, there's one in South Fort Worth. There's one in downtown Fort Worth. There's one in North Fort Worth. So I know like, hey, on this experiment, I got I got room, right? I got space. Um, let's talk about the autopilot. Awesome. Um, I've had autopilot for a long time. Back in the day, constantly having, uh, you know, the false brakes and the, you know, lane departures and all this other stuff. It's night and day, right? Um, a couple years ago, or actually last year, two years ago, they kind of scrapped the software and redid the software using AI versus coding out all the scenarios. The AI modules, night and day, right? Um, as you guys can see, the truck is still warning me, hey, slow down. And at this point, I got to a point where I was like, you know what, I'm probably going to have to stop anyway. You know, why drive slow when I can just drive fast, get there a little bit faster. So you see me, you know, pulling 80. I'm like, I'm not really worried about energy consumption. I'm just at this point making moves. As you can see, I'm burning more than I'm supposed to be burning, uh, which is the exact opposite, right? So on the way down, and again, it's probably the elevation thing, right? So going from Houston, which is close to, uh, you know, sea level all the way up to uh, DFW, going down, less resistance going up, going uphill, right? Uh, but at this point, I'm just like, all right, let's just, let's just move. I'll get to a charger. We'll figure it out. Um, I'm kind of doing the math and I'm looking at the app and the Waco charger is pretty much full, right? You know, people are com coming in and out, but the 22 stalls, uh, they're sometimes they're full, sometimes they're full, 27 miles away from it. What are we going to do, right? I'm trying to slowly figure that out. Um, and I'm kind of in the groove of thing and everybody in the car is asleep. Wife sleep, kids are asleep. Don't really want to stop at one certain point, right? Because if I stop, you know, and I'm 109 miles in, right? So 109 miles down, about 131 to go. And I'm like, you know what? Let's let's just push it, right? Kids are asleep. If I stop, they're going to wake up. People are going to get out the, the truck. That's going to be an even bigger delay, right? And all I really need is just a little bit extra, right? And so I was like, hey, you know what? Let me just, let me just keep pushing, right? Um, again, the truck is telling me, hey, you might want to slow down. And I, I think that's the beauty, right? The truck is actually also factoring things like the wind, headwinds, the direction of the wind, the temperature, all these things. The truck is doing all these calculations, right? And it's warning me very gently, hey, man, you might want to slow down. But at this point, I'm like, I have other ways to get there. I'll be right. Now I'm 142 miles in, basically 100 miles left, right? As you can see, two hours in, about two hours left, I'm I'm in the zone. We're At this point... We're, we're mentally, either we're going to make it or then I'm going to stop in Abbott or I'm going to stop somewhere else here driving. And what do I see? I see cyber trucks coming from Austin, right? So that's freaking awesome, right? And I'm joking around saying, hey, these are your brothers and sisters. These are your cousins, right? Uh, so kind of cool just to see. Again, they've already delivered 40,000. Um, if they can do 40,000 the first year before the price drop, 
I'm assuming this is going to be a, you know, 100,000, you know, truck deliveries a year type thing. That's kind of my base assumption, right? Um, I don't know if they're going to do more than 100,000 until they start, you know, dropping the price once they have the rear wheel drive version. If they can get this down to 60K, maybe they're going to start pushing 150,000, 200,000 units, but we'll see, right? But anyways, at this point, hey, I'm committed to try to do this experiment because worst case scenario, at this point, I'm going to stop at one of four places along the way. So we're here. Uh, yeah, uh, still going pretty strong. Uh, let's see. We'll look right here at this point. 180 miles in, right? So 180 miles in, about, about 60, 70 to go. So again, feeling good, feeling good about it. Hey, right now, the mileage left is showing more, 204 miles in, and what, 36, 37 miles to go, three hours down, kids are comfortable, and it's showing me visibly, hey, you're going to get there with about 15 miles left. 15 miles left, not the best feeling in the world for anyone that's had an EV, but you know, sometimes you got to push it, right? And and honestly, the the perfect scenario is to spend as least money as possible at the superchargers and spend the money charging at home because I'm paying 14 cents a kilowatt at home versus paying, you know, 34, 47 or 50 cents a kilowatt, right? Again, showing 40 miles of range and I'm getting close to home, right? So I'm starting to feel starting to feel real good, right? Again, at this point, I still have two other superchargers that I'm going to pass. So I'm like, you know what? If something happens and the range just drops and tanks, I'm going to be okay. Um, anyways, here, made it home. Uh, low battery warning, got to get on the charger. 238 miles, right? So just 240. Uh, using with 15 miles left, leaving at 92%, right? So how does that math math? Uh, basically... That math, if you do the math, it's saying that I would have gotten 275. If I had been at 100% at this rate, I would have had 275 real miles going at the speeds that I was going. Again, so big picture, going down from DFW to Houston, you're going to get 300 miles, good weather. Going back up against the wind, against the elevation, you're going to get about 275 real world, right? So good to know that. Now I get better confidence in the truck with our main drives. Anyways, guys, thank you for watching this quick review of the Cybertruck. I really do appreciate the support. Thank you for, you know, supporting. Hit the like button, leave a comment if you have any questions. If you want to see more videos, you have ideas about videos, if you have tests and things that you want to see, leave them below. Also, help me decide on my color wrap. What color wrap should I get? Anyways, thanks a lot. You guys have a blessed day. We'll see you soon.